Today's video is brought to you by Wondry and more on them in a bit. Today we're going back in time, but also not, and we're going to explore the legends of military history, from the 19th century Moss and Nagant rifle, to the iconic B-52 Stratofortress, to the classic Colt M1911 pistol. Let's discover the enduring stories behind these incredible weapons of war that we still use. So let's dive in, shall we? Yes, we hear the thousands of voices crying out in comment sections across the internet. Everyone's favorite 19th century bolt action rifle seems to be the M1891 Marcin Nagan. And with good reason, this sturdy and versatile weapon has been continuously used for over 130 years because, well, it just works, doesn't it? It should have been no surprise when, in the spring of 2022, it was noted by observers of the Russian invasion of Ukraine that many Russian troops, particularly those not on the front lines of the conflict, had been issued with the same weapons that their great, great grandfathers could have been using to defend the Russian Empire from invasion over a century ago. The Mosin Nagan, designed from 1882 to 1891, has been produced in numbers rivaled only by the AK-47. At least 37 million units have been produced since 1891, and the rifle has seen service in at least 40 wars. It was used in Imperial Russia's Pamir's occupation, the Philippine Revolution, the China's Boxer Rebellion, the Spanish Civil War, both world wars, the Vietnam War, the Yugoslav War, and lately wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, as well as the Syrian Civil War, and now finally the Russia-Ukrainian War. That's insane. The Mosin Nagan was Russia's response to the changing nature of mechanized war. Russia had been badly embarrassed by the 1887 Russo Ottoman War, where Turkish troops armed with American Winchester repeating rifles decimated the Russian army, carrying only burdened single shot rifles. Russia began seeking a modern replacement and found it by combing the designs of Captain Sergei Ivanovich Mosin and Belgian designer Leon Nagant to produce a 4 kilogram, 8.8 .8 pound, 123 centimeter 48.5 inch bolt action repeating rifle with a five shot non-detachable magazine chambered in the brand new 7.62 russian rimfire rifle cartridge that was a hell of a mouthful the resulting rifle was light simple to operate and maintain and boasted deadly accuracy at up to 800 meters 875 yards with a muzzle velocity of 865 meters per second or 2800 feet per second the first run of half a million rifles was produced in france at the time france and russia were close allies though it saw steady service over the next half century the Mosin Nagant did not become a truly ubiquitous weapon until world war ii when the russian army turned to its proven design to produce millions Millions of units, including sniper variants, which garnered international acclaim in the hands of snipers such as Vasily Aitsev and Ludmila Pavlachenko. It was also used against Russian forces by Finnish sniping legend Simo Haya, who used a Finnish version of the Mosin Nagan to kill over 500 Russian invaders during the Winter War of 1939 to 1940. And no, he didn't use a scope. The rifle's ubiquity and accuracy inarguably contributed to the Russian victory at the Savage Battle of Stalingrad, and it was that the muzzle of the Mosin Nagan that Berlin fell to the Red Army in 1945. Though the Soviets ceased production of the rifle following the war, the immense stockpile saw continued use in conflicts all over the world, including by civilians and militias, as well as Olympic biathlon teams and sport hunters. Though a few variants were built by other countries, including the US, Finland, Romania, Czechoslovakia, China, and Hungary, the lion's share of the world's nagans continued to be those produced in the late 1930s and early 1940s in Russia, of which millions are believed to still be stockpiled by the Russian army. Given their continued popularity, it's safe to say that these rifles will remain in service for many more years to come. Now, just before we continue with today's video, I do want to quickly talk about my favorite subscription service, and that would be Wondery. And look, I love learning and growing, sort of what I do here on these YouTube channels, and that's exactly what you can also do with Wondery. Their library of content is constantly evolving, and you can find the answer to everything you've ever wondered about, and some things you probably never thought to wonder about. That's the joy of Wondery. Today, I'd like to recommend the documentary Forbidden Literary Works. I recently made a video about this stuff and wanted to learn more, and Wondrium have a 24-part lecture series looking at some of the most famous book bannings from history. And it's kept me busy for weeks. I'm pretty busy. Even if you watch them all quickly, it's going to keep you busy for days. And that is just one tiny example of the plethora 
of content that there is on Wondrium. And also, if you're like, oh, I don't particularly want to learn about history, well, they've also got loads of courses about hobbies and skills and all sorts of more practical stuff as well. And the best part about Wondrium is you can enjoy it from just about anywhere. Look, if you want to join me on a journey of self-discovery and learning, start your free trial now. Go to wondrium.com forward slash side project or click the link in the description below to get started with your free trial today. Thanks to Wondrium for sponsoring today's video. And now back to it. So what the most nagging is to rifles, the M1911, also known as the Colt Government, is to pistols. A weapon developed up the US Army adapt to rapid changes in the technology of warfare near the turn of the 20th century, the Colt 1911 has transcended its roots as a service pistol to become a cultural institution among gun lovers everywhere. Designed by John Browning, the grandfather of modern American firearms and the designer of iconic weapons such as the Winchester 1895 repeating rifle and the M1918 Browning automatic rifle, as well as popular cartridges such as the 50 caliber MBG and the 45 caliber ACP, the Colt 1911 is a masterpiece of efficiency and safety. Conceived to take advantage of the short recoil principle, which allows the pistol to reload itself using its own muzzle energy, the M1911 was among the first semi-automatic center-fire pistols and unquestionably the predecessor of most modern military, civilian, and police handguns in the world today. The pistol was the result of a search in the 1890s for workable alternatives to heavier, less accurate, and slower to load revolvers that were currently in service. The advantages of the Colt's design cannot be understated. The Nagant M1895, a close contemporary of the M1911, had to be loaded and unloaded manually, bullet by bullet, demonstrating just how limited revolvers could be in warfare. The Colt's auto-loading, self-ejecting mechanism was revolutionary in pistols. The M1911 beat out competitors such as the Mauser C96 broom handles and the Mannlicher M1894 to become the basis of a new generation of semi-auto pistols. Even just looking at these other designs today reinforces the influence of the Colt, which was a major departure from many of the common practices of handgun design up to that point. The gun took quite a while to catch on. Though its earliest variants were produced by around 1900, only about 70,000 units were delivered to the US Army by 1918. It was not until 1926 that the M1911A1 would be adopted by the US military for service in all of its branches, making it the default choice for personal defense by US troops in World War II, with several million units being made. At first, only officers were issued with the weapon, but enlisted soldiers often chose to buy their own pistols as well when they were available. Among the important modifications for the US military was the addition of the iconic grip safety, which requires the user to squeeze the pistol's grip while pulling the trigger. This design feature, along with a manual safety, allows the gun to be kept in a cocked and loaded position while being safe to carry. These features allow an M1911 to be carried with a round in the chamber with no need to rack or slide or otherwise chamber around before firing. The pistol proved popular among all the Allied forces and was produced in large numbers for the US and Allied militaries well into the 1970s. British commandos in particular prized the M1911A1 for its accuracy and reliability and the design was widely copied following the war. It was used in Vietnam and Desert Storm and was still being issued to high-ranking U.S. Army officers until the 1990s when it was slowly replaced by the Beretta 92F and finally the Beretta M9, which drew many design cues from the 1911 and its variants. In a testament to the gun's efficacy, it remains one of the most popular civilian and police weapons, particularly in the United States, where models such as the Colt Commander, Colt Government Mark IV series, and the Colt 1991 series continue to be produced to this day. In addition, hundreds of customers models have been produced, some of which fetch over $5,000 retail. At least 30 countries continue to issue the M1911 or one of its variants to their military or state police organizations. There's simply no list of iconic long-lived weapons that does not include the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress. This heavily armed and armored long-range bomber has made the US the world's supreme air power for six decades. According to Air Force Chief of Staff General Nathan Winning in 1954, the long rifle was the great weapon of its day. Today, this B-52 is the long rifle of the air age. 
Despite not a single unit having been produced in the past 60 years, this titan of the skies continues to be synonymous with American military might. Of the 744 originally produced for the US Air Force, 78 are still in operation. It's practically required to mention in what is surely a deft PR exercise by the US Air Force that there exists at least one crew member currently assigned to a B-52 Stratofortress whose own father and grandfather served on the very same plane. Despite the enormous bombers being older than virtually all active duty US Air Force personnel, there are no plans to retire these behemoth bombers anytime soon. Current plans are to continue their use into the 2050s, at which point the oldest planes now in service will be nearly 100 years old. The B-52 came into being following the Second World War, when the US Air Material Command AMC issued performance characteristics that it was seeking a new strategic bomber, which would be needed to replace the fleet of nearly 10,000 B-25 bombers that had been rushed through production during the war. These smaller bombers, which lacked internal pressurization and offered relatively limited range of defensive capabilities, were to be replaced by a fleet capable of carrying out US missions around the world, quote, without dependence upon advanced and intermediate bases controlled by other countries. Countries. Design efforts continued from 1945 until November 1951 when ground testing began. The resulting bomber was capable of carrying 32,000 kilograms, that's 70,000 pounds of weapons, and has a combat range of 8,800 miles, making it capable of striking virtually anywhere in the world from a US Air Force base. Combined with aerial refueling, a B-52 Stratofortress can traverse the circumference of the Earth and return to its home base in a single flight. It was a B-52B that dropped the nuclear bomb on Bikini Atoll in 1956, and it was a B-52C that first achieved non-stop flight around the perimeter of the United States, traveling 15,530 miles, that's 25,000 kilometers, in 31 hours and 30 minutes, with four in-flight refuelings. The first circumnavigation of the Earth was achieved by a B-52 in 1957, taking over 45 hours. Despite being huge, the Stratofortress was also fast for its time, setting a speed record of 560.75 miles per hour, that's 821 kilometers per hour, over a 3,105 mile, that's 5,000 kilometer circuit. It once even flew from Japan across the continental United States to Spain in a single leg without refueling. The B-52 has since provided the backbone of US air power projection in many conflicts from Vietnam to the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. In all, at least 13 variants have been produced through upgrades to the existing fleet's weapons, engines, and defense systems. The B-52 continues to serve as a testbed for experimental future weapon systems such as the hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept missile, uh, which was tested from a B-52 in 2022. When the last B-52 flies at some point after 2050, she will have been one of the world's longest-lasting weapons of war. Yet she won't even be half as old as our next weapon. Old Ironsides, the three-masted wooden-hulled frigate that continues to serve the US Navy under the name USS Constitution. She is the oldest military ship in service anywhere in the world, and some believe the oldest ship still afloat. Launched in 1797 as one of six frigates ordered under the Naval Act of 1794, the Constitution was named by George Washington himself, picked from a list of suggestions from then-President Secretary of War Timothy Pickering. She first protected American merchantmen in the First Barbary War of 1801 to 1805, but it was the Battle of Guerrilla during the War of 1812 between the US and the British Empire that she earned her nickname Old Ironsides. The nickname comes from a classic poem by American writer Oliver Wendell Holmes Sr., who wrote it in 1830 as a tribute to the Constitution following her defeat of five British warships during the battle. The poem includes the lines, Oh, better that her shattered hulk should sink beneath the wave. Her thunders shook the mighty deep, and there should be her grave. Nail to the mast her holy flag, said every threadbare sail, and give her to the god of storms, the lightning and the gale. When rumors circulated that the U.S. Navy planned to scrap the ship in 1830, the poem was reprinted in the Boston Advertiser newspaper and was subsequently reprinted all over the country, promoting thousands of letters and public calls to preserve the ship. Its popularity became so great that the U.S. Navy designated a, a permanent museum ship in 1907. In 1878, she sailed to the Paris Expedition, carrying American artwork and other technology demonstrations. In 1934, she went on a three-year tour of the United States, visiting 90 ports. And in 1997, she took part in a 200th anniversary celebration of the victory of the Battle of Guerriere. She continues, to this day, to serve as an active-duty U.S. Navy ship. 